The iPad Mini is a fantastic product. I mean, it's virtually perfect. It's it's small, it's thin. I can use it with just one hand. It doesn't put much um, force or stress on my hand. It's like if you go uh, on, if you're traveling, it's light, it's easy to put away. I'm gonna turn down the light so this way uh, it won't be so blurry. And these are some of the functions that you know that Apple added, such as um, what the night shift, so that basically the uh, screen's temperature decreases in order to uh, not hurt your eyes. Because the problem is so many people use these things in the dark, just like I'm doing now. And so many people use these things when they're waking up from sleep because they have to check emails and whatnot. That I guess somebody realized, hey, damn, this damn thing is uh, making it so I can barely sleep. And um, ultimately, these things are fantastic. I mean, when you're listening to the news or watching YouTube or whatever... It's like you have instant access to just about everything. A lot of the um, a lot of the uh, complaints that I used to hear about Apple products not being able to support Flash and Java and this, that, and other have pretty much disappeared simply because the market knew that this was such a good product that they basically targeted every single bit of their information towards Apple products. Now, regardless the school connections, you know, Apple in education, and regardless the... Um, fact that the vast majority of businesses like the elegance of an iPad and have decided to basically purchase iPads in all of their business models when they're, um, you know, showing information to their clients. The the mere fact is everybody has pretty much agreed that, okay, we're going to develop for Apple first and then after that we'll develop for Android since it takes so much longer to develop for Android since there's so many Android devices that are so different. But um, this... Retina display is fantastic. You know, it's never, ever blurry. Like, it, it's perfectly sharp. It looks great. It just, everything about it is is just perfection. Some developers have devices with higher resolution screens. The thing about it is the human eye, for the most part, at most distances, can't even see higher resolutions and um, I personally prefer using my smartphone, my iPhone 7 Plus 256, for the very simple reason that I have, like, a tremendous amount of capacity on one of these things. And uh, when I go to the auto show, I'll only be taking my iPhone with me, and I'll be recording 4K video for over five hours. Because only a 256 gigabyte capacity is going to give you that ability to do that. And... Um, it's unfortunate that the iPads don't have all of the technology that the latest iPhone does. And even with the iPad Pro, which is a larger device, you know, you still, you just don't have the full power that the iPhone has. So the iPhone is actually, you know, technologically cutting edge. So in my opinion, one of the things I realized, it's kind of hard to keep track of two devices. Like, I've worked my iPhone in as basically part of my body. It's like wherever I go, it's in my pocket. I realize right away whether or not it's there or not. The iPad, however, is harder to work into my schedule. It's like I can't put it in certain places in my car because it won't fit there. The iPhone does. I can't just charge it like I charge my iPhone when I get in the car. It's I got, you know, one wire or something on my desk at work it's like the iphone is just easier to deal with on a daily basis on a regular time and because the iphone screen is basically um it's about 30 percent the size of the ipad mini if you have like two and a half iphone uh, seven pluses you basically get the size of one of these ipad minis but um because it it's just so much easier to deal with the phone it's like that's one of the reasons why i didn't rush to get an iPad, you know, I just didn't rush to do it. It's nice to have this, and I also like the fact that AT&T gave me an unlimited plan that allows me to tether directly to the iPad, so this way I can share my um, data on my phone with my iPad, but um, I like having this, but the only downside with Apple products is once they get old and obsolete, you just want to, you know, trade them in, so you can put them on eBay or you can give it to some kid or something you know, who just doesn't have one. But uh, the, the downside is, you know, with the metal back, you have to protect the metal back because if you don't protect it, it gets scratched up, it doesn't look good, cosmetically good, and, you know, it's hard to replace those backs by yourself. You pretty much have to have a professional do it. 
But um, the iPad fully charged will give you close to 10 hours, depending upon the brightness of the screen, but it'll give you around 10 hours. So that's pretty much good for an international flight. And because this thing is so light and soft and it's so, it just stays out of the way. It's like you can put, I can put this in my jacket pocket. It makes it so that this is really a great device to go on vacations with. It's really a great device to travel with. And, um, you know, I hadn't made a video in a while, so I figured I might as well review this since I just got it. But um, I'm just waiting for the auto show so I can get there. And that's not very long from now. That's only about two weeks from now. But, um, you know, the iPad minis are great little devices. And uh, if you were com contemplating whether or not you should buy an iPad mini or an iPhone, you should definitely buy the iPhone instead. This way there's less to carry. But if you absolutely need the bigger screen and you like to sit and read ebooks and whatnot, you know, the iPad mini is probably better and more efficient to buy and easier to deal with than, say, a full-size iPad.